together this morning on this Sunday morning where we get ready to remember the nation's fallen. And as we do, Father, may you enter into our prayers, our condolences, and our heartfelt thanks for those who have served this nation to the end of their lives. They gave their all, Lord, so that we could experience freedom. And we know that truth, Lord, because you gave your life that we might have relationship and freedom through God the Father. Father, uh, these men and women, they were dedicated to their last breath that we would be a free people. Father, today, in our humble celebration, in our remembrance of them, may our heartfelt thanks and appreciation be felt. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So tomorrow, uh, of course, is Memorial Day. And we remember nationally, we take the time to remember those who gave their all, who gave their last life for freedom. And so it's a little bit different maybe than Veterans Day. Uh, Veterans Day is uh, a day that we celebrate all who served. But Memorial Day is the day that we honor those who gave their lives, those who are already gone. And we have a fairly tremendous national cemetery. I don't know if you've been visited. Perhaps tomorrow you will. And uh, I appreciate those <clears throat> who have been there. Thank you. Sometimes a little water is helpful, isn't it? Uh, but it's a tremendous place. And I was amazed at my first visit there how many people visited this national cemetery. It's a beautiful place but it's a place of honor, and it's a place to remember those who have fallen. So it's a little bit different maybe than our recollection of Veterans Day. Veterans Day is November the 11th, but uh, yeah, this day is uh, kind of special to our recollection, uh, recollection and national memory of those who have given their all for freedom. This morning, we really have two tasks. One is to uh, honor Memorial Day, and then the next, I'm going to introduce our next sermon series topic for prayer. And so we've already had quite a time in prayer this morning already, but we're going to talk about, I'm going to kick off some of the reasons why prayer is so essential in our vernacular. You know, why as believers that prayer is something that we need to have. And my voice is going, isn't it? So those are our two tasks this morning. Thank you for the water. Uh, so many of us are probably going to celebrate this holiday with a three-day weekend, some barbecues, some family events, and for some, maybe a paid holiday. Uh, for those that are retired, enjoy your day tomorrow. <laughs> it's going to be fun. So uh, yeah, so uh, Memorial Day is a day that we uh, rest as a nation and remember and honor those people who gave their all. So today I'd like to start our remembrance of our fallen heroes with a solemn pledge that they took, both men and women, and it's a pledge that we grew up with. Maybe you learned it in grade school, uh, or maybe uh, you say it every day, but it's the Pledge of Allegiance. And so this morning I'd like us to say the Pledge of Allegiance, and if you'd please stand. Uh, we'll say the Pledge of Allegiance together. We'll face the flag. I pledge of allegiance to the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. <laughs> That's it. That's it. You may be seated. No, it's short. <laughs> That's it. We used to do it in school. Does anybody remember those days? Every day in your morning exercises, you would say the Pledge of Allegiance. I don't know that they do that today, actually. That's good. Uh, I want to say... Patriotism is next to godliness, isn't it? 
We should defend the nation that we live in because God has given it graciously to us. Yeah. So, um, well, let me give a little background on Memorial Day. And uh, so here comes the history teacher. But I'm going to use Wikipedia to basically uh, give us a brief narrative. And so many of you might have remembered in history that Memorial Day used to be called Decoration Day. And in 1866, just after the Civil War, and it's amazing how history has uh, still an effect. The Civil War still has an effect on us today, both in our race relationships, in uh, national institutions. Uh, but on this particular holiday, it is something that comes to us from the Civil War. The Civil War, we lost more Americans in that battle than any other war still in our nation's history. So about 600,000 men and women died during the Civil War. And so again, um, people in the nation at that time in America, they felt compelled to decorate the graves of those who fought. And so by 1866, the year after the Civil War, people were already doing that. And so, but it became contagious. Other people saw it and they're like, you know what? We need to honor those who gave their lives. And by 1868, it became uh, a tradition. Uh, it, it, it spread from that point. And from 1868 till 1971, uh, uh, and it became a national holiday, people remembered the dead. And so Veterans Day is related to the end of World War I. So it's remembered on that particular day. But Memorial Day is really something from that time. And in 1971, uh, we got Monday as the national holiday, and it became a paid holiday. And like some of you, I remember uh, people in my family who actually now, I remember them saying, oh, now it's changed, we get Monday off. And so some of those people work for the government. And so thank you, 1971, Richard Nixon, <laughs> because now we have a three-day holiday. And I want to say that gives people time to reflect, recollect on really what was at stake, what it means to serve one's country to the end of your life. So that's a little bit of the background of Memorial Day, a little bit of its history as it comes to us today, more than barbecues, more than traveling, and already we have people traveling, and I'm gonna be traveling tomorrow to go to uh, Ronan, Montana, and I hope I've said that correctly, uh, to visit a friend named Ken Smith. I'm actually going out on his cattle ranch to talk about ministry in Africa. So very much looking forward to that. But a lot of people will be traveling. This is a huge travel holiday, a huge uh, barbecue holiday, but it's also a great time to visit the National Cemetery and remember those who gave their lives. So I have a couple of things that I'd like to share with you this morning about Memorial Day. And one of them is a poem that um, Lorraine and Dan's niece wrote. And it's a fantastic poem. She's 13 years old. Uh, I heard it for the first time uh, this Thursday at the Gigi's, and I'd like somebody to come up and read it if I have a reader volunteer. Somebody, would you like to come up and read it? This is our resident, uh, resident poet, and let me grab you a microphone. The name of the poem is Sandbags of the Trenches. I am the Sandbags of the Trenches. I'm from the trenches of warfare. I wonder every day when the war will end. I hear soldiers yelling and bombs bursting. I see soldiers hiding behind me from the depths of guns fires. I am a soldier protection. I am from the war of the world. I pretend that everything will be okay. I feel the soldiers pain and sorrow. I touch the shaking ground as the bomb I touch the sinking ground as the bombs of war strike. I worry if the war will never end. I cry, wanting it all to be over. I am a barrier of the trenches. I am from the war of the three trenches. 
I understand how these young soldiers feel. I say this with all be, oh, this will all be okay when the war is over. I dream of the clear blue skies coming back one day. I try to remember the times where <clears throat> were the birds sing and the sun shining in the day. I hope one day these brave young soldiers will get to go home to their families. I am the sandbag of the trenches. Wow, how about a praise offering to the Lord? Wow, thank you so much. Thank you, Sharon. That was done by a 13-year-old who was moved by Memorial Day. And I wanna say that's inspiring that she would get the heart of what that meant, you know, to be an object on the battlefield and to know that the lives of soldiers rested on the protection of a sandbag. And so I wanna say as a Marine, uh, we filled a lot of sandbags, we dug a lot of trenches, we dug a lot of uh, uh, foxholes, but what a way to remember that by the inspiration. That person is uh, Emmeline Fleck is her name, 13 years old, a junior high student. Wow. One of the other things uh, that I wanted to read is a famous poem by John McRae, and it's known as Flanders Field. Have you heard it before? And so I'm gonna set this microphone aside. And then I'm gonna read this poem. Flanders Field, Fields uh, by John McRae. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place and in the sky the lark still bravely singing fly. Scarcely heard amidst the guns below, we are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrels with the foe, to you from falling hands we throw. The torches be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep though poppies grow in Flanders fields. And so today I'm wearing a poppy and this is a poem from World War I, which of course we also get Veterans Day. And I think maybe some other people might be wearing poppies as well but the poppies of Flanders fields. That's probably a call from there now. <laughs> but um, that uh, was from Lorraine that she put together for the uh, Memorial uh, Talk, Memorial Day Talk from the Gigi's, which was very inspiring. And to really learn about that history and as a nation to be grateful about that. And I think as believers, there's a lot of things that we have to be grateful for. Many of them that uh, picked up arms in defense of the country were themselves believers of every shade and every kind. And so uh, regardless, uh, as a nation, we wanna honor those who brought us freedom. So I would say, please, uh, you know, uh, put down the adult beverage maybe. <laughs> or the barbecue, and uh, take some time to pray for and remember those who served, and remember those who gave their lives. Many of them were young, inexperienced, but they gladly uh, gave their lives for our country. And so that's what Memorial Day and tomorrow is all about. Amen? Amen, amen and amen. All right. so. Next, I wanted to talk about um, prayer. And so I'm going to uh, change course just a little bit and really talk about the power of prayer. And so um, prayer, is, prayer is our opportunity to explore our faith and exercise our faith directly to God. Prayer is exactly a faith thing. And so um, 
Yesterday, I started out at a conference called the Ignite Conference. And as I introduced this, uh, this summer series for prayer, I wanted to talk about some of the experiments that we did in prayer. And anybody ever experimented in prayer? You ever just prayed something It's like, God, will you hear it? Well, if you haven't, you should. And talk to God, pray about something, and see if he hears you. And maybe if you're the only one that knows about it, maybe that might be something that you'll see him work on. Yesterday was kind of interesting because I went to uh, an Ignite conference here in our area, and there was heavenly music there, but it was different. When I went to the Ignite prayer, uh, the Ignite prayer conference, it was also on evangelism, and prayer and evangelism are related. Evangelism will be the topic that I talk about a little bit in the future uh, once we talk about prayer and we look at some things on prayer. But um, we went to South Center Mall, and everybody knows that South Center, not South Center Mall, uh, Mall of America, Outlet Mall. It's now the Outlet Mall. But it used to be the Super Mall. It used to be the Super Mall. It is now the Outlet Mall in Auburn. And most people would not think that would be a place where you would experiment with prayer, right? It's the marketplace, isn't it? It's funny that a lot of Paul's ministries were marketplace ministries. But in one of our prayer breakout sessions, we took a couple of hours, got in our cars, drove there, about 20 or 30 of us. And uh, I have to say that I was a little bit skeptical, but I've seen people saved, like in India, waiting for the bus. I've seen people come to the Lord. I've seen people come to Jesus at a bus station. <laughs> I've seen a lot of stuff with prayer, but I was like, okay, let's see how this works. And so we went to uh, the outlet mall and we began to pray for people in groups of two, just like the disciples. We went out in groups of two. We saw people, we saw each other, we waved, and we began to pray for people and then what happened was crazy. By the time we left there, about an hour later, there were people waiting in line for us to pray for them at the mall. Yeah. I, we prayed for marriages. We prayed for salvation. We prayed for restoration of faith. I think that if we set up a booth uh, right there at the corner, or right here in Covington, at the corner of Wax and 272nd and open it up for prayer, we'd have a line. <laughs> we'd make another traffic jam there. But I was amazed at how many people actually came out for prayer. And they were sincere. I saw tears of joy there from an hour experiment in prayer. Here in our church, we've seen a lot of prayer go up. Um, and we've seen answers to prayer. We've seen healing. Uh, we've seen whole nations move in prayer. And I want to say, what an experiment that prayer is. But prayer, it does ignite something. It ignites something not only in God. Does God need prayer? No, he gives it to us, doesn't he? It's a test of our faith, and he says, talk to me. Pray to me. Have fellowship with me. Prayer is one of the most supernatural things that you have. It is, uh, I wouldn't say it's a weapon, it could be, but I want to say it is the most powerful thing on the planet is a believer's ability to pray. One person came here from Nigeria, and I'm sure he took a lot of prayer. One person, and through prayer and through his actions, he changed everything. One person, one prayer makes a difference. So we'll look at a little bit of that, but through this sermon series, we're going to look at some of the opportunities that we have for prayer. And we've seen prayer work in this nation. We have a list. We pray every Wednesday. We get together with a small band of people, because the prayer warriors are always the smallest, and we list the prayers of the congregation. We start praying for people. One day, it was down to me and Mike. We were the only ones that were able to make it for prayer. And we started checking off the list of all the prayers that God had answered. 
It was absolutely amazing. He'd answered, what was it? Was, Mike, was it 10 or 15 of the prayers that we'd prayed? It was amazing. We checked off the list of things that he answered, and they were big prayers and little prayers. Prayers of healing, prayers of faith, prayers of moving, prayers of uh, restoring finances, all kinds of stuff, jobs, all kinds of stuff that God had answered in uh, our prayers. That is the power that prayer is. The Ignite Conference uh, was amazing because it was also on evangelism. And I'm starting to do my own homework in prayer. And I mean, I've been in ministry for over 30 years now, but I'm always learning something new when it comes to talking, communication, and evangelism. And I say this as a rabbi. As a rabbi, I'm a teacher, but not necessarily an evangelist. But man, all things are possible with God, aren't they? All things are possible through prayer. And so I'm hoping that we become evangelists. And I said last week, I just dropped the uh, prayer coin that uh, our brother Stan had made. But I said, if you pass it, you become an evangelist for prayer. You know, become an evangelist for God. It is something that you can pass to somebody else that reminds them not only of the cross, but also the ability to prayer. It is one of the most powerful tools you have as a believer. You don't need power. You don't need electricity. You don't need any of those other things. You have direct access to God. And so the Super Mall was just one of the highlights. And I was, we all came out of there and we were floating, you know, with all of the prayer, all the testimonies that came back. And it was like, I was very skeptical when I went. And I was like, oh, this is Washington State, man. You know, people are more likely to say, I don't need none of that, and I'm out of here, and I didn't come to the Super Mall to, uh, you know, for prayer. But nobody turned it down. And I would say that was an amazing thing. It was astounding. There was a line of people. We had to leave because we had to get back. We had to get back for the next sessions. And uh, what a problem to have. What a problem to have in prayer that people would be waiting in line to pray. Prayer opens everything up in our relationship with God. If you want to have an open relationship with God, start praying. When I became a believer, and this was before I was a believer, I was like, God, if you're real, show me that you're real. That was my prayer. Show up. Show me that you're real, God. Oh, and he did. Yeah, he did in a big way. I was laughing at God, and pretty soon I was crying. I was crying that, of my own sins and sorrow, but I was also crying for joy. You know, man, God will show up. Test him. Test him in those things, and he'll show up. So um, prayer is like talking to a friend. It opens up human relationships. If you don't talk to your friend, man, what happens in your relationship? Hmm. It ends, doesn't it? God wants you to talk to him. He wants you to speak to him. He wants you to pray. And there is more than just talking and praying toward God. There's so much more than that. But it's about a relationship. It's an ongoing relationship. There are some people that prayed and prayer walked with God. And you know what? They just kept going with him right into eternity. We may see him again. One of them's name is Enoch. Just kept praying, walking with God. Man, what a thing that is. What a testimony. Where is he? We don't know. <laughs> but he's with God. So, like in human relationships, prayer opens up so much more. Prayer is that, is that ability to talk with God. And this is a strange thing. We don't always know who we're praying to, do we? We don't always know who we're praying to, but we're praying to not just a deity, we're praying to the deity, the one who is limitless, the one who's eternal, the one who can make all things happen. That's the person we're praying to. We're praying to a person that loves you so far beyond logic that he actually became a human being and gave his own life for you. He came through eternity just to be with you. And he gave you the ability to talk to him at any single time, no matter who you are. You know, whether you're a you know, a prince, a uh, person, or a president, it just doesn't matter. 
God's channel is always open to you. Prayer opens everything. Prayer is a deep response to trust and faith in God. Uh, it builds our relationship with Him, and it changes everything. Prayer changes every single thing, but it changes you the most. It builds your trust, it builds your faith, and it builds your confidence. And so uh, I just wanted to throw some of these key ideas out. That the concept of prayer is one that is central to the practice of Christianity. Prayer is one of those central things. I would say almost, it's not as essential as the blood of the Messiah, but it's right next to it. It is one of those key elements that if you have a relationship with God, that you're going to pray to Him. It's interwoven in the fabric of our relationship, and it serves as a direct channel of communication and aligns our hearts with His. That's what prayer does. Prayer aligns your heart with the heart of God. Um, my key scripture uh, is from uh, Mark 11:24, and I'm going to look at 24 or 22 through uh, 25, and we just kind of set that up. But faith is a pre, uh, prerequisite for prayer. If you don't have faith, you're not going to talk, right? You're not going to pray. So prayer, you've got to have faith. It's a prerequisite to that. You've got to have faith in order to pray and communicate because you're praying, you know, you're praying to something beyond. It's like picking up the telephone. God may answer you back and he may not but you may see the reality of what your request was in moments, uh, minutes, uh, or perhaps in a lifetime, you may see the result of your prayers. I can't list all the prayers that I have seen personally fulfilled in God. And yesterday was another experiment at the mall where I saw people's prayers answered and people were ready for a relationship with God and to put their trust in Him. That's hopeful for evangelism, isn't it? They go hand in hand. So at the core, faith is confidence and assurance in the character and promises of God. If you're praying and asking, that means there's a reasonable hope that you have. You have faith and trust in God. So um, when Jesus addressed the subject of prayer, he emphasized the importance of faith according to Matthew 21:22. Jesus said, whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive it if you have faith. The verse underscores that faith is an indispensable component of effective prayer. Without faith, man, it doesn't work, does it? Man. I picked this particular scripture, and these are the words of Jesus. And he's somebody that knows something about prayer, because even though he was deity... He was the second member of the Trinity. He operated in prayer. He operated in his humanity. So he prayed to God the Father. And God answered him. God heard his prayers just like he'll hear yours. So uh, I wanted to uh, read this scripture uh, from Mark because it's very similar to this uh, one in Matthew 21. Mark 11, 22 through 25. And have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and doesn't doubt it in their hearts, but believes uh, that what he said will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And so I want to say this about prayer, too, because I talked about relationships. But prayer is also supernatural. I mean, we have a phone that's physical, right? I just used it, right? Just to talk about Wikipedia. It's amazing what you can do with a phone. But prayer is so much more powerful. Because prayer is supernatural. The power that you have, you know, uh, it's not a battery. It's the Holy Spirit. It's unlimited. The Energizer Bunny runs around, right, and charges stuff up, right? But the Holy Spirit is so much different. God has given you the ability, no matter how much power you have or how little, to, to basically pick up and call him at any time. Whether you say it out loud, 
You know, whether it's a corporate prayer like we prayed this morning or whether you're praying deep in your heart, prayer has the ability to do things. It has the ability to heal. It's something that's completely supernatural and totally built on your faith in calling on the one who's able to answer your prayers. It is a supernatural act. Not normal. The Super Mall, it wasn't normal for us to be there. Uh, we weren't selling anything. We didn't have a booth or a stand. But what we were doing was helping people communicate with God their Father. And supernatural ability, and that is the power of prayer. It's not like anything else that you have. It is one of the most powerful arsenals, uh, one of the most powerful, if you want to look at it as a weapon, and it's not. It's really the power to save, the power to heal, the power to change things for good, the, the ability to pray within his will, all of those things. Uh, the power of prayer is that piece of armor that allows you to communicate with God directly, right in the thick of the fight, no matter what happens. It is an amazing thing he has given you, and you have free access to it at any time. I am amazed at how little <clears throat> I pray and how little churches pray. We pray corporately, but oftentimes we don't pray together, and our prayer group is actually one of the smallest groups that we have. I, th I think it's actually, of all the groups that we have, it is the smallest. The prayer warriors. They are the chosen few. They're like the Marines, right? <laughs> uh, it's Wednesdays, Wednesday night, so I'm advertising for that too, for the prayer group Wednesday night. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Speaking in tongues, we can talk about that too, because that is one of the gifts that comes uh, through uh, prayer. And uh, people talk about a prayer language. But in Acts chapter 2, um, there were people from all over the world, every tongue, every tribe, every nation, and that's really what's at stake. And through the supernatural power of God, they prayed and they spoke, and people in all other languages, and you can read the text, they heard what it was that Peter was saying. I'm sure they heard a lot, but they heard the voice of God. And so it's an amazing thing. Prayer unlocks so many things. Healing, when we get to that portion of this sermon series, I'll talk to you about some amazing things on healing that have happened in this congregation and in places that we've gone around the globe just in healing prayer. Prayer is the most important thing, the most important tool that we have. Um, I wanted to go on and say this, that if you believe, and I said when I came back from Nigeria the last time, we saw over 50 miracles in prayer, the thing that they had was belief, which is faith and trust. That unlocks the prayer. I don't want to get too long on this because I'm going to talk about it more later through the sermon series, but uh, their faith, their belief, really unlocks it. And Jesus says it in this particular piece that your faith can move mountains. Your faith is powerful. Uh, your ability to believe something, you know, and God hears your prayers. It can change nations. Um, it can heal people who would never normally be healed ever before. Uh, but in a supernatural way, it can heal them, strengthen them, redeem them, and change nations and move mountains too. It can do all of those things. It is the power that you and your belief in the ability of the one who's able to perform it. That's an incredible gift, an incredible tool that you have from the Creator Himself. Uh, I wanted to say this, too, as I look at uh, math, uh, Mark 11, uh, starting here at verse 25. Um, oh, let me just sum up the end of 24. It will be yours. If you believe it and you have received it, 
it will be yours. Verse 25 says this, when um, you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven will forgive you of your sins. That's also a piece of it too. Forgive people. Come with a clean heart. Pray with a clean heart. Pray with a clean spirit. That's also the start of revival as well. The start of evangelism. You know, and when we looked at the Lord's Prayer, and the Lord's Prayer is the biggest message I've ever delivered in my life. When I was in Nigeria this last time, I spoke that prayer to 3,500 people in the church and another 1,000 outside, and 8,000 people heard that message on Facebook alone. They're still hearing it. It's the biggest, and it's on prayer, and it's on the kingdom. And one of its key elements is forgiveness. Uh, forgive others as they trespass against you, and it will also be forgiven you by the Father. Forgiveness is a piece of that, and if you want to pray revival for our nation, and we need it, man, start with forgiveness first in your own house. Seek those things first, and then it's a key. It opens up. Think about the Lord's Prayer. It's more than just an example. It's an example that we should follow, and it's based in prayer. And that, again, is Matthew 6, verses 9 through 13. Now, I'm going to move rapidly to the close because it is Memorial Day. It's a holiday, right? Right? There's a ball game going on, right? There's, a, there's a, this tiny race in Indianapolis that's going on right now. Uh, people are driving very fast, hundreds of miles an hour around uh, Oval Track, right? So I just happen to be from Indiana. I grew up about six miles from that track, and I say I was born on the backside of Gasoline Alley. You know, uh, but I could uh, see the race from the farm. Um, <clears throat> so I wanted to say this, that faith, uh, faith and prayer in, in line with God's will, it does a lot. And that's where we should be. What is God's will? He clearly states it. We got to study it. We got to look at it. But his will is to bring life. His will is to bring abundance. His will is to bring blessing and save the entire planet. If you line yourself with him, you are absolutely unstoppable. You'll move mountains. You'll heal people. Uh, you'll see the works of God. And that's our assignment, basically. That's our job. That's what we're supposed to be here for. We're representatives of a kingdom. Today we represent a nation and remember those who fell. But it was God that established this nation, wasn't it? Man, how much more can we do when we're aligned with his purpose? And so our faith is strengthened because we are praying for what he has promised and purposed. Man, start praying. Start experimenting in your own prayer life. Get up in the morning, you know what? And before you start anything else, before you look at your phone, before you look at your emails and your text, spend a little time with him. Spend a little time in prayer. I try to start my day, and I mean not try, I do start my day with a devotion and a prayer every single day. I don't always end that way, but I try to. But I start my day that way. I changed Mondays in my vernacular. Monday used to be runaway Monday for me. Mondays when all the problems came, people call me, bad stuff happened, you know. Uh, I get up, I get up with a start, you know, I get up anxious and stressed, right? And then I started to look at Monday differently, and I started praying about it differently, too. Now Monday for me is a miracle Monday. It's Memorial Monday for us in the nation, right? But think about it as uh, Miracle Monday. Start changing it. Start praying. Start your day in prayer. The interplay between faith and God will be seen in Jesus' prayer, and you can see it um, when he prays in Matthew 26, um, Basically, uh, Lord, would you remove this cup from me? And sometimes prayer comes with some strong stuff, doesn't it? For those people that gave their lives, it came with some strong stuff. I'm sure they were praying. Everybody in the foxhole, they, they have a God. <laughs> They're praying because it may be their last time. But sometimes prayer, like in our nation, we've got to stand up and pray um, when that time comes. There may be real reasons for us to pray, not just for our desires, not just for the things that we want or need, but there may be real reasons. 
Uh, our faith is strengthened because we're praying and we're trusting on the promises of God, much like the men and women who dedicated themselves to our country. I want to say this uh, finally uh, as we uh, get ready to close and throw up our last slides. Yeah, that is the last slide. And some closed music. Jesus, in so many ways, is our ultimate example for prayer. Not only does he give us the disciples' example, but he himself models it. In the toughest times, we see Jesus kneel down and pray. And um, it didn't always seem like his prayers were answered. Lord, if this cup should be moved from me, but not thy will, not my will be done, but thine be done. And sometimes in a Christian walk, maybe his will is for us to speak to somebody who doesn't know Jesus at all. Maybe it's just that simple. Maybe that's hard for us to do. You know, they say public speaking, you know, and death, you know, they kind of go hand in hand. But sometimes just praying for somebody, man, that's the first step out of our comfort zone is to reach out in faith and trust God and pray to him. The relationship between prayer and faith and prayer according to God's will <clears throat> reveals a profound truth. Prayer is not just about bending God's will to ours, praying as we get ready to go to sleep at night and falling asleep. God is not a vending machine. You know, he's not a genie in the lamp where we rub the, you know, and magical things happen. But God is so much more than that. Our prayers exhibit our faith. They strengthen us. They strengthen our relationship with him. I want to say on this Memorial Day, that's something for us to think about. I'm looking forward to this sermon series. I only get to introduce it today, and briefly talk about it. But I'm looking forward to this sermon series on prayers because I think that not only are we ready for it, but I think our community is ready for it, um, our nation is ready for it, and uh, our people are. I wanted to close kind of with um, uh, this particular scripture up ahead, and let's see if I can read it. I'm going to stand up here. And so as we pray for America and we pray for our fallen ones, I really thought about this particular verse from 2 Chronicles 7.14, and it says this, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. What more can we ask for for that? And the key is prayer. The key is our faith unlocked through prayer because we reached out to the divine. We recognize there was something beyond who we are, but he has the ability to change nations, move mountains, and you do too. It's right in your heart, it's in your mind, it's in your soul. And no matter who you are, you have the ability to pray to the Almighty One the one who saves, the one who changes us, the one who makes all things possible. Um, this Memorial Day, I hope you're praying this prayer. Our country needs it. Our fallen need it, but our communities need it too. But more importantly, you need to pray. Now more than ever. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it says at the very end, and heal their land. The Bible verse is 2 Chronicles 7, 14, Old Testament. Yep. Um, he'll heal our land, but he'll heal you too. Man, prayer is the most important asset you have. More important than what you got in the bank. More important than uh, the gross national product of any nation. Man, it's some pretty powerful stuff, and you yourselves have the ability. Through this sermon series, we're going to talk about all of those things, but prayer unlocks something, but most of all, it unlocks your faith. May God be with you today as you remember 
Memorial Day. May this be a memorial to you in prayer. And uh, we're going to sing our closing song, and then we're going to stand for the benediction. God bless you. Happy Sunday. And thank you so much. Thank you for your service, Shirley.